Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today you find me out at Bramber Castle, West Sussex, um, in the village of Bramber. As you can see, the castle is all but destroyed. Um, it's roughly a thousand years old and was built by the Normans and the Lord of the Manor was William de Brose, who was the owner of the rape of this area, which is where they divided parts of Sussex into strips of land to be governed. So this would be probably part of the sort of tower still. Um, there's no sort of actual sort of drawings of it in its... Uh, heyday so what we make of what's left is um, is left to our own imagination So here we find some of the parts of the old destroyed castle. I'm guessing that was designed to put a timber into. As you can see, just made of lime mortar and flints. Another couple of big pieces here. Sure, whether these are parts of the sort of wall or a collapsed tower. Interesting when you get up to it. You can see the uh, limestone blocks blended in. So kind of makes me think that this was probably an internal corner and these limestone blocks were for dressing it up. So this is what's left of the guard tower or uh, the sort of entrance gate tower I guess you'd call it. Again you can see up there where the wooden timbers would have come across to make the floors and uh, another other part of it there um, kind of makes me think that this old bridge that's here probably isn't an original bridge it's probably been made from the remains of the tower and I would guess that this is probably the outside of the tower here it looks more like an outside which would probably mean that the original entrance would be going across there rather than there. than that as you can probably make out there's not 
a huge amount of it left as you'd expect for a castle made of lime and flint being a thousand years old even if it did have walls that are I mean, that must be six foot I would imagine at the bottom there wide you see thins off as you go higher because uh, you don't want it to be top heavy you want it to be heavy at the bottom and uh, thinner at the top so it doesn't fall over yeah, some strange earthworks here it's going to be very hard to know what's original and what's been dug up this castle was built up on a hill as you can see down there quite a steep hill and obviously on this side of the castle the remains of uh, all the walls are gone but it's just a good example of how commanding a view it would have had over the landscape and obviously be a sort of a visual deterrent for people to uh, try and take advantage of the of the land um, this was built around the Norman conquest time and if you're unfamiliar with Sussex over in that direction is Hastings where the Normans landed and this um, area here has the River Ada running through and the River Ada has silted up over time and uh, it has become a very narrow river and changed its course so it's now quite a long way from this castle but back in the day when this castle was built it would have been very close to the castle and um, this would have been obviously sort of dominating the landscape over it and if you wanted to do trade or business you would need to um, pay a tax I would imagine to the castle um, and obviously if you're raiding then uh, yeah, you would they'd be able to rain fire down on you uh, not that they had much firepower a thousand years ago but uh, yeah they could have sort of had a garrison of people in this area so in this sort of area here below the moat mot rather um, supposedly people were living within the walls of the castle so there would be a small community um, what we've got to remember is the communities of a thousand years ago were a lot smaller than the communities that we see today so probably you know, all the families of Bramber could have lived in this small area um, no evidence of those houses because they would have been much more simply built made of um, wood and mud essentially in lime mottled and daub type houses probably so this is the mott um, this area below will have silted up a little bit and the mop will have eroded but this would have been quite dominating over the centre of the castle and obviously wouldn't have all these trees on it back in the day. So here we find another part of the castle still intact, partially intact and um, as I said hey, there's some uh, limestone built in to dress the corners to beautify it and possibly even the flint walls, obviously we don't have any evidence but the, the flint walls may have been dressed with lime to make them sort of stand out you know, like a bright white um, edifice on the hill um, we haven't got records of that but it's possible that they may have done that there's no evidence that that's been done obviously no idea what the purpose of this room was 
but I would imagine it's some kind of security room because we have a post hole here. So I would imagine a, uh, a post or something would have been dragged out across the door to blockade the door in, stop people from entering. So yeah, if this was a tower like the gate tower we see over there, then obviously we'd have had a very good view over the landscape and be one of the sort of places that people could retreat into if they're under attack. Here we find some more of the wall left intact. And again, you can see the flint and lime construction. Obviously at this age, there was no uh, bricks being made, I'm aware of, so everything was made from naturally sourced stone. None of you are nervous of heights, but uh, this is a very solid wall as you can see. Um, just looking there you can see this may have been a, an actual sort of walkway because we have a raised section to the right and it's quite defined and then another part of the wall. Again the sort of top parts of the wall would be thinner because uh, stop them toppling over, not that it has stopped it after a thousand years. Whether we can see down there but probably about there you can see the bottom of the moat which has silted up over time so is a lot, lot higher than it was back in the day. So another feature we see here and I'm not sure whether it is a feature because it's so old and there's no records but some holes and a hole there. So back in the olden days what uh, the people in the castle would do is have holes that basically poured down to the moat and uh, they'd be pouring things like sewage and uh, hot fat, um, anything that they could just to deter the people from climbing the walls. It's possible that these are the holes designed to exit the fluids. So here we find a hole in the wall. Uh, looks like it's been dressed here, so um, and no steps, but there's some roots to climb up and down with. I'm not sure whether this was an entrance um, previously, probably not in the time that it was a castle um, or a defensive castle. But here we can see the outside of the wall. along the edge. And we can see some of the features I was saying earlier. That also could be um, basically a post hole for building the castle. So the way they re recreate uh, building castles these days is to put wooden posts into the outer structure and build a, a scaffold up around it. There could be something to do with that, although I don't see any regular post holes down here. And again there's a sort of like a dressed edge there. So I don't know whether that's been done in restoration so that people can see the outside of the wall. Certainly here 
I don't know whether you can get the perspective on that, but the, the wall is hanging over quite significantly. So it probably wouldn't take a huge amount for this to fall off. Uh, like the other lumps that you can see in the moat. Looking down there you can see how steep the, the hill is and this was probably a natural formation that they chose near to the river and uh, possibly would have had um, other purposes used by the pagans um, and obviously when the Normans invaded they took over a lot of the um, spiritual places a um, bit like Chanctonbury um, yeah, built up on the, the top of a hill and definitely would have had a lot of history prior to the Normans coming here one thing is in the late 18th century and early 19th century uh, places in Sussex were used as tourist attractions for the population in London and this was no different so there was a railway that used to run around the center of the castle and also some tea rooms and it was uh, quite a, a popular tourist location still is today uh, popular uh, but not as popular as it was earlier um, the great thing with this castle is it's free it's just a bit of open land you can come to it's never gated off um, you can come here at any time of day so great to see bits of land that are left open to the public so here we find the center of the castle the Mott in the Mott and Bailey and uh, going back to a lot of the other videos that I've spoken about interesting that in the centre of this there is a divot um, so a lot of the sort of mounds in this area have this same feature could just be where people have been sitting digging for treasure I don't know there is another hole there but this I mean that one and this one could be from where a tree has grown here and uh, been uprooted in a storm and sort of blown down and taken the sort of root ball with it as well so uh, as, I, as I've said previously this um, area would have had a lot of history prior to the Normans coming and therefore there would have been a, um, probably a spiritual use to this, this land prior to the Normans coming. Regular viewers to the channel will know that I do like my trees. This one's an awesome one. Look at the root ball on this. And amazing colours of the bark. You can see why so many trees are turned into furniture. And what's more amazing to see is how this straddling a section of the old wall like a spider with a grip on its prey another great tree here they're very strange and knotted looking trunk Another magnificent root system as well. 
that's interesting to see in this section of the wall. Looks like they've thrown bits of chalk into the wall. And when you get on, on top, you can see it's um, construction a little bit more differently. So traditionally what they would do is build the sort of outer bits of the wall and then just literally throw rubble into the centre of the wall. And we've got some very big stones here, not just flints, um, monster flint there. So I'm going to finish the video up here. If you could like and subscribe it will help me to make more videos just like this. And I've also recorded a separate video on the channel discussing the paranormal things that go on at Bramber Castle. But not for every person in the audience I thought I'd do a separate video. So again thanks for watching. How awesome is this Survivor Land Cruiser?